now. There we go. So uh, with that, um, uh, Josh is going to share his screen here, and uh, then we will get started here uh, with the meeting. Can you see it now? I believe we can. All right. So. Um, Thank you everyone for coming out today to the uh, 2023 Canada Winter Games Selection Policy Information Session. Um, we really appreciate uh, seeing uh, some people out here for this. Uh, the Canada Games is, is a really important uh, endeavor for us. Uh, we're really excited about the crop of athletes uh, that uh, are uh, kind of in contention for the games this year. We think we, we potentially could have a very strong team. Uh, so uh, it's, it's very exciting, um, but obviously the uh, selection of the team is always a, a challenging uh, thing to uh, go through. So um, we hope that today's session will help to uh, uh, clarify the process that's going to be used. Um, before we get going with uh, the rest of it here, uh, just note that uh, we are asking everyone to save questions for the end. So if you do have any questions, uh, you're welcome to put them in the chat. Uh, we will address them there. Or if we get to the question period at the end, uh, you're welcome to raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask any questions that you have. Um, but uh, with that, we will get things going and uh, go from there. So we can go on to the next one there, Josh. Okay, so the Canada Winter Games, very exciting. Um, we have uh, we have uh, the event taking place in uh, February 18th to 25th uh, in 2023 in uh, beautiful Charlottetown, PEI. So it uh, should be a nice uh, location for everybody to go to. Um, next one. Perfect. So uh, we will also want to remind everyone of our coaching staff for the games. Uh, I see Ben on there now. So uh, he is uh, here. And then we also have Giselle who uh, could not make it tonight, but uh, uh, both of them are, are very excited um, and uh, are, are going to uh, lead quite a good uh, program for us here. So in addition to the coaching staff that we have, uh, we are launching our Canada Winter Games Task Force. So this is going to be a, uh, a time-bound committee that uh, Squash BC is organizing uh, to provide oversight of the policy. So we have a, a selection policy that's been board approved. Uh, it's posted publicly. Everyone should uh, be able to see uh, what, uh, how, how that will work. But this group, they're meant to oversee that policy to ensure that the group administering it is uh, following it uh, in the way that it is written. So uh, a few things that they will do, uh, they approve uh, the various lists that come out. So direct selections and our selection events. Uh, they're gonna approve the draw format and seating for the selection event, uh, as well as approving the venue. Um, and then uh, when all is said and done, they will approve the final uh, roster. So they are kind of that governance of the process, um, not the administration of the process. Uh, so on the task force, it's going to be five people. Um, we have uh, two roles that are currently filled. So one by myself. Uh, and one by our, our Squash BC Provincial Coach, Richard Yendel. Um, and then uh, we will have three additional roles that we are in the process of finalizing who are filling them. Um, uh, there will be one board member, one community member, and one additional member, which can be either a board or community member. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be very uh, excited to announce the full task force as soon as that passes through our board approval process. So looking at uh, what we're here to do over the next few months, uh, we are trying to find uh, our team for the Canada Winter Games. Uh, the team, uh, based on the standards of the games, uh, consists of four males and four females. 
Uh, they all need to be eligible for the games. Uh, and two of each of those sets of four uh, do need to meet U17 age eligibility requirements. Um, as well, we are going to be selecting some team spares. Now note the team spares uh, will be involved in any team training we have leading up to the games, uh, but they will not travel to the games unless they're required to fill in for uh, one of the team spots uh, if that is determined prior to the start of the game. So just to overview this process before I turn it over to Josh, who will go through it in more detail. Um, but basically, uh, there are five stages of the team selection. Um, and uh, they, they kind of work like <laughs> one big funnel through. So uh, first, we need to break our, our larger group of athletes down into which of those athletes are eligible for the games based on a few standards. Then we look at who is going to be directly selected to the team out of those eligible athletes. Uh, from there, we'll have our selection event. So that uh, involves finding out who's eligible for that event and then also uh, actually going through with the event. Then from the results of that and the direct selections, we will have our team. And following that, we will finish it up by selecting our spares. So uh, yeah, so with that, I, I, I am going to turn it over to Josh now. He's going to go over the policy in detail. Um, and I, I would remind everyone that uh, you can also follow along with the policy. Uh, it's, it's a long document. Uh, it can be a little uh, confusing at times, but uh, we are very confident in its ability to select the best possible team in the fairest possible way. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Josh and uh, he'll take it from here. Thanks, Colin. So yeah, so we've, we've broken the policy into four, four stages in this presentation, to, uh, just to simplify how an athlete is selected and how they're eliminated from contention. So the first stage is, does the athlete meet the uh, eligibility requirements that are outlined in the policy? And then if they meet that, do they meet the team Team BC direct selection criteria that will either put them directly onto the team or they'll have to go into the next stage, which is the team selection event. And they all, they'll have to meet both the selection event eligibility criteria and they will also have to participate in the tournament. If they decided not to participate from the in the tournament, they're, they're moved out of contention. And then from that selection event, then we'll select who meets the uh, Team BC selection and spare selections. So the first stage is the, uh, does the athlete meet the athlete eligibility? So there's many components uh, consisting of how they must meet eligibility and they must meet all the six listed on the slide. So the first two, they're both determined by Team BC, Canada Winter Games and Squash Canada which is those documents can be found in the policy. The next stage is, does the athlete meet U17 or U19 eligibility? So all, all participants have to be at least born with a date of birth of March 6, 2004 or later. All athletes have to meet in, and have an active Squash BC membership and be in good standing with Squash BC. And then all that, so this is a major one. This, this deadline is coming up next week on Wednesday. Each athlete has to submit a declaration of interest to participate in the Canada Games. That's it's just a Google form. There's about ten questions, and it's it should take you less than two minutes to complete. And then the final requirement to meet eligibility is they have to participate in the BC Junior Open. The registration deadline closed yesterday, so if you're if you're wanting to be on the team, please email me as soon as possible and I'll try to get you into the tournament. So once the athlete meets all those six requirements of eligibility, they'll move into, does the athlete meet the Team BC direct selection criteria? This, this selection criteria to get direct selection is designed so that the top players in the province that have had good results over the past 18 months, roughly, 
uh, and their club locker ratings reflect a 0.5 club locker rating above the determined players, then they'll receive automatic selection and they won't have to participate in the selection event. So there's two types of direct selection. There's the U17 and U19. The U17, it, we're using the third ranked U17 eligible athlete and they must have a 0 0.5 club locker rating above that U17, the, the third place player. Both the first and second U17 players could both get direct selection if they meet that requirement. The U19 is 0 0.5 above the fifth ranked uh, player. Um, if all, this one, there's, there's a appendix in the policy that outlines if there's more than two U19 athletes that don't, or two athletes that, if there's two or more athletes that don't meet U17 direct selection criteria, they'll, there'll be a different process to determine how those athletes are selected. But the main point is the fifth eligible player is used for this. That allows us the team of four athletes. Josh, if I could just add in before we move on to the next thing, yep. um, it is important to note that throughout this policy, uh, you will find uh, the terminology of U19, and U19 includes U17. So if you're a U17 athlete, you are also eligible as a U19 athlete because you're younger than the birth date that uh, is required. So if you're a U17 player, you can still consider yourself part of that group. Uh, you just, uh, if you're a U19 player only, so say you're, you're 18 years old, uh, then you can't be considered for U17 spots. Thanks, Colin. So here's an example. This is the same uh, example that's inside the uh, policy. This, this is determining the U17 exemption athlete. So as you can see on the slide, athletes A, C, and E are grayed out and blacked out because they don't meet U17 eligibility. So they're not in consideration for this U17 exemption. The, so athlete B has a 0 0.55 club locker rating above athlete F who has a 5.3 rating. So player B or athlete B receives direct selection to the team BC and they won't have to participate in the selection event. Athlete D only has a 0 0.15 club locker rating uh, score above athlete F. So athlete D will have to participate in the selection event if they want to be a part of team BC. For the U19s, as Colin mentioned, the U17 athletes are also in, in consideration for this uh, status. So the so athlete A in this example has a 0 0.6 club locker rating above athlete E, who is the fifth ranked player and is the player that we're using for um, tracking if they meet exemption status or direct selection status. Athlete B only has a 0 0.45 club locker rating above athlete E. So athlete B does not receive, athlete B, C, and D do not receive direct selection. And they will all have to participate in the um, selection event. Please note the, the, this slide and the last slide are not related. Um, if this use, if athlete B meets U17 direct selection, they don't have to participate in the selection event even through this example. So now if we once we've determined which athletes meet direct selection, we'll we'll trigger down the list and the then determine who's invited to the team selection event. And the email will be sent out to those athletes and it will be posted on the website. Um, this event will take place between November 22nd and 28th. We're hoping to have as much of the matches played over the weekend, but de depending on how many athletes are invited um, based off the selection policy, then we might have to use the weekdays to get those matches in so that athletes aren't playing more than two matches a day. 
The facility will be determined based on the location of the majority of the athletes and if there's a facility available for the duration of the matches we need. The policy also aims to invite eight athletes, um, to both male and female. Please note that there's not going to be eight athletes invited to a U17 event and a U19 event. It's just going to be one male event and one female event. Then the next stage is these invites are going to be sent out on November 17th. We're going to use the November 16th ratings to determine who's invited. And then the invited athletes will be posted on the Squash BC website so that everybody knows. So how do you meet the selection event criteria? So we're since we need two athletes that meet U17 age eligibility, we're going to invite the top four ranked U17 athletes. After that, we're going to invite the next four ranked athletes that meet U19 age eligibility. This could include some 17 year old or U17 athletes in this next four ranked players. That's the next four ranked players among all players in contention. Then, should any athletes counted in point A have direct selection, an equivalent number of athletes will be invited to the selection event. And then, if a player has a 0 0.05 club locker rating point, points within the lowest rated player that's invited to either A, B, or C, then they'll be invited to the selection event. This could be no athletes, or it could we could be inviting 10 athletes if there's a zero, if there's a enough athletes within that 0 0.05 rating. So breaking that down, I'm gonna try to simplify it using this staggered approach on how athletes are invited to this event. So first off, we're athletes C and A both receive direct selection to the team. So they, they're eliminated from this. Then athletes B, or sorry, we're gonna, we're gonna do the U17 athletes first. So athletes E, F, G, and are invited to the selection event, including, this includes athlete C, we'll, we'll get in more detail later in a few st stages. Then athletes A, B, D, and H are invited to the selection event. Since athlete C received direct selection, we're gonna invite an additional athlete to the event. And then since athlete K is within 0 0.05 of athlete J, who is the lowest rated player that was invited based off points three or A, B, and C, then they'll also be invited. Since athlete L is within zero point, or not, sorry, not within 0 0.05 of athlete J, they're not invited. For, in this example, it, like the, you see athlete K and L are within 0 0.5, but that, that, does, that doesn't, uh, is not considered within our policy. It's everything's based off athlete J as the lowest rate, rated player. Yeah, if I can, if I can hop in there, yeah. Josh, the reasoning for that is uh, like we could be getting in a situation where uh, we could just keep having to invite more and more athletes if that athlete that is the lowest rated player keeps shifting in every uh, round of decision making. So it is, uh, again, the target number of athletes for this event is to have it with eight athletes of each gender. So that eighth ranked athlete is the one, or eighth invited athlete, I should say, is the one that we're going to use to determine whether we need to invite additional athletes to keep it fair for everyone involved. Because we know there can be some fluctuations in the club locker ratings week to week. So if you're really close to that player, we want you to have the opportunity as well to try out for the team. Um, so we did set that as a, a, a small range, just in case we do have a, a crop of players in, in a, a small ratings range. 
you know, so once those invites are sent out and the athlete participates in the selection event, we'll, we'll be sending out that who's selected for the team and the team spare. So the team selection, we're selecting four males and four females. And at least two of each gender must meet the U17 age eligibility requirements. So the out, as outlined in the policy, the first point is the athletes that achieve direct selection are automatically on the team. And then if any U17 spots remain, the highest placing U17 athlete at the team selection event will be invited. So this could be one or two athletes, or it could be zero athletes at this stage, depending on how many athletes meet direct selection. Once the U17 spots are filled, any remaining spots will be filled with the highest rated finishes at the selection event. Then Team Spare, as Colin mentioned, though these athletes will be invited to participate in training leading up to the games. And if a reason so calls that a player can't participate any longer at the games before the start of the tournament, then they'll be invited to attend. Um, these athletes, uh, sorry, spare, the spare selection criteria. So we're selecting two up to two athletes for each gender. These athletes could receive direct selection if they have 0 0.05 or sorry, 0 0.5 club locker ratings above the next rated player. The top finish athletes in the selection event that meet U17 eligibility who was not already selected to the team. So this is, we need at least one U17 spare in case one of their two U17 athletes get injured. And then the remaining spot will be given to the top rated player from the selection event. So breaking down the team selection into an example, uh, so we'll, we'll go up in order of how the team selected. So for, first we're gonna select the players that met direct selection. So athlete A met U17 direct selection criteria. Then athlete B also met U19 direct selection criteria. Once those two spots are filled, so now we have one remaining U17 roster spot available and one U19 roster spot available. We're gonna invite the top rated U17 placing. So even though athletes C and D finished above athlete E at the selection event, athlete E is being selected to the team to represent that U17 spot. The next spot is gonna be that remaining U19 roster spot. That's going to go to athlete C who finished at the top of the team selection event. Once the team selected, now we'll invite the team spares. So since we only have two U17 athletes on the team, we're going to invite another U17 as a team spare, which is the top finishing U17 athlete who is athlete H in this example. Once we name that team spare, then we're going to add a U19 team spare who is the next top placing athlete, which is athlete D in this example. So now we have the team selected and we've determined who's out of consideration for the team. There's a chance that there, you might file an appeal based off the selection event. We, we're using the pan Canadian appeals policy and the event appeal policy procedure if there's a event that occurred during the selection event. Now we're going to open it to any questions. So, yeah. So just before we hop into questions here, um, thanks Josh for, for outlining that. Um, I think it's important to note that the policy is intentionally complex. Um, and that is uh, because we are trying to result in the best possible team in the fairest possible way. So um, you may struggle to see how parts of it work, but we have walked through a lot of scenarios 
uh, in the design of the policy. So we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Before we go into uh, any questions, um, I'll remind you, you can put them in the chat or you can raise your hand and uh, unmute yourself. But uh, I thought I, I would, uh, I don't wanna put him on the spot, but I would give Ben a, an opportunity if he wants to say anything uh, just to uh, uh, speak uh, just about, uh, I guess, uh, his role in the, uh, the upcoming process. Sorry, just had to unmute myself there. Um, wow. <laughs> uh, I probably still have questions about the policies and, and uh, going through it and looking at it as we go through this process. That's, uh, uh, it's different from what we've done uh, in the past. I've been involved with four different Canada game cycles, uh, one in Quebec, and three in BC. Uh, each of those selection processes has been slightly different. I think uh, the spirit of this process that is being put forward is going to help us get through the process with the least amount of conflict. Um, going to that selection event Sort of seems like we always in BC we we pre-select a team and then there's complaint or there's challenges to that and then it always ends up going back to uh, playoffs. Um, so having looked back at all those cycles and seen that those those challenges have always happened, it's like all right, well let's just have the challenge first and let the kids play off for it. So I, I commend. Uh, I didn't put this policy together. I read through it multiple times and I commend Josh and uh, Colin going through a, a very hard process in a very busy time of year, as everybody probably knows right now that uh, you guys did a good job because I know I'm busier than anything right now. So uh, I, don't, I don't have really a lot more to say about it. I'm very interested to see how it works. Uh, I'm following it very closely and Simon seems to have a question, so. Awesome. Thank, thanks, Ben. Um, so we, we can turn it over to questions now. So Simon, uh, feel free to unmute and uh, we can go from there. Thanks, Colin. Um, I only have one question and that is to do with uh, sickness. If it comes down to one day or, or, or a couple of days selection event, um, I was just looking at the policy to see how that is worked in. And let, uh, let's, let's say for argument's sake, if one kid is sick and let's say, four kids are sick. And I'm just asking just in this COVID world where it could just like land four of the eight kids who are slated to play, just say, let's just say there are no automatics, for example, four out of the eight are out. Is it going to be rescheduled and how is it going to be rescheduled? So this is the kind of decision that we would utilize the task force for, um, because I think that this is the kind of thing where there, there's an argument on both sides. Um, the selection event was placed in that week intentionally, um, one, because of the, the placement in the calendar overall, as far as not having uh, junior events competing with it and also getting through a few junior events uh, that are key ones in the fall. So it's not an easy event to reschedule. Um, but that being said, if we were in a situation where there were a lot of players who were invited and uh, who were not able to play based on uh, a, a, an important reason like, like sickness for the safety of everybody attending the event, uh, we would look at uh, advice from the task force as far as how we would handle that because it, it is a, a, a case that we hope we don't have to go down. Uh, ben, you want to add to that? Yeah, um, I think having that selection event earlier in the in the process does also give us a if something arises that the committee, as you put together, deems that we need to deal with um, for whatever reason. It could be sickness. It could be multiple. It could be we'd be put back in hold too, right? Like there's always that potential that. The government's going to step in. We don't know. 
Uh, we do have that flexibility in the timeline that we could push that event uh, based on the Canada Games requirement to name a team. So, yeah, we got flexibility, which is a nice thing to have where we've not had, we've been sort of at the rush in past uh, cycles. Yeah, I, I think in general, we're trying to operate uh, with the athletes in mind. So what is going to be the best for the, the athletes uh, that are in contention and also with the team in mind. So uh, we, we are uh, optimistic about our chances at this Canada game. So we want to we want to put forth the best possible team. So uh, read into that what you may, but it's it's it would be a, a, a decision point that we would have to to really carefully consider if something uh, was to change date wise. Does anyone else have questions? Give it a minute here in case anybody's trying to unmute. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure if we missed a slide, the the important dates slide. Oh yeah, that that actually is a great slide to put up here. Um, yeah, so just looking through this slide here. Um, few important things for people to have in mind. Uh, the first one uh, is, uh, as Josh mentioned earlier, uh, this upcoming Wednesday at the uh, end of the day is when you need to submit your declaration of interest to participate. Uh, I would say if you are unsure of if you did it, do it again. Um, it, it can't hurt to have two of you in there. Um, but uh, and if you have any questions about it, please do email Josh. Uh, if you encounter any issues with the form, we hope no one does, but uh, email him as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, we are going to be as well, just looking at the athletes that are in that uh, kind of top eight rankings list. Uh, we will send them uh, a quick email if they haven't done the, the form as well uh, early next week, just because we do want to make sure that a technicality like not saying you want to participate isn't the reason why uh, you don't get to participate. So we, we hope that everybody takes that administrative step to uh, uh, put themselves forward for the team if you're interested in, in play. Um, next one on there that's uh, good to keep in mind is the uh, ratings date. So um, we are using November 16th as the ratings date. Uh, that is a Wednesday which is the day when Squash BC's ratings list is the same as Squash Canada's. We did that intentionally um, because the Squash Canada one does only update weekly. So uh, hopefully that doesn't have any confusion into what rating everyone has, uh, but we will be posting uh, the list of athletes who are eligible, who indicated they wanted to participate along with their ratings uh, the following day. So that way everyone will be able to see that in a nice transparent way. Um, last thing to keep in mind, uh, assuming everything goes off uh, without a hitch, uh, we are looking at announcing the team on December 1st. So that does mean that if you, if you are on the team or if you aren't on the team, you should know pretty early so that you can make those plans uh, to uh, uh, have that time ready for the games itself. Okay. So I will uh, ask one final call for questions here. If anyone has it, now is the time. And uh, if not, uh, we will close things down. Um, if you have a question after this, please feel free to send it to us. Um, and uh, if anyone wants to go back over anything that was in this presentation, uh, we will be getting it up on the website as soon as possible. Um, and uh, the recording will be up there as well so that you can actually watch back any parts of it uh, if you need to. All right. So uh, with that, I, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out today. I'd like to thank uh, Ben and Josh as well for their work uh, in putting everything together and uh, their work going forward as well. It's going to be an exciting time. And uh, we'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, 
or sorry, uh, Carissa, do you have a question? Oh no, I was just ready to say thank you. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Well, you're welcome. I'm gonna have to make dinner now. So, <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye.